So I found a way for you guys to practice unlimited and free um, SAT questions. So how do you do that? Well, as you know, College Board, they have limited resources, and there aren't that many resources out there. So this there is this thing called Linus Prep right there. Um, the fun, free, and effective way to study for the SAT, which is a bold claim because our channel is free and it's effective. I'm very good at what I do. Is it fun, though? I don't know. That's up to you guys if you think I'm funny or something. How do you study the SAT with fun? Well, their approach is that they did a lot of research with human psychology and stuff. Uh, for me, it's a gamified part. Gamified. So, you know, like you play games on your phone, mobile games, or, you know, we learn languages on Duolingo, things like that. So, you make a free account. I'm emphasizing free because our channel is all about education, equality, and equity, and accessibility, right? Free. So, this is the account. It's what it looks like. You can do reading and writing or math because those are the sections in the SAT. And it's broken down into the sections and categories as on College Board. Information and ideas, craft and structure, and so forth. Yeah. And... You can also navigate it through this menu, which is convenient. All right, so there are these little daily missions. You can uh, earn XP, score lessons, practice, and you give it a little sense of accomplishment. So if I go here, okay, there's this little graphic. The graphic is like related to the reading on a lot of these, just a lot of effort on their part, so kudos to them. All right, so this one I'm going to get right. No, that's wrong. All right, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to show you how this works. All right, so... You get it wrong, they tell you why it's wrong, right here. And if you get it wrong, you lose a heart. And your hearts fill up over time. So although it's unlimited practice, if you run out of hearts, then you gotta wait. And you say, wait, Jay, wouldn't we be doing this because we're bad at this? And if we're bad at this, wouldn't we get them wrong and lose hearts? Then how would I keep practicing? There is a way. That's why I'm making this video, kind of, like, to tell you that there is a way. I'll let you know in a second. Okay. Um, so this, uh, I got right, just to show you how, what it looks like when I get it right, and then, I didn't mean to get that right, but, alright, so once you do three questions, you can review the questions, right, and you review the question you got wrong, yeah, so that's pretty cool, uh, that, that was right as well, okay, cool, good job, me, and you can also send them feedback on the questions, which I like, it's always good to be, um, communicative and responsive to whoever you're working with and yeah let me know what you guys think about these questions and if you guys have any questions on like oh, how does this work and uh, is this really how it comes up in the SAT well ask me I have it on the channel and you know it's me uh oh so how do you get do this for free you see I have like unlimited hearts here unlimited is it because I'm a VIP no I haven't paid them I haven't bought an account if you are within the first thousand people to sign up and I don't know how many you got I don't know when they launched you get Turbo, which is like the premium membership for life, for free. Uh, unlimited practice you get because technically the hearts fill up over time. But what's more important for me is the unlimited hearts. So you can just keep practicing. And I have that. Uh, yeah, so again, I don't know how many people they got right now. But if you guys like sign up like now, you, there, you definitely should be able to get within the thousand people. And you should be able to practice. Okay. Um, it doesn't personally make a difference if you guys make an account or not. I'm not getting paid on you guys signing up so just go do it because you guys said you want to get better on the sat right so go do it practice get your reps in and again if you guys have questions or the questions let me know on this video in the comments or emailing and we'll go over and it'll be fun i like this little interface it's neat um going to today's topic though switch the window back yay question id c so what are, this is on um, sat question bank transition question as we transition into this question. It's a transition placement. Okay, and this is one of those, as is the case with most of the questions we do, that a lot of people get wrong. Alright. So um this is the case. So first of all, let me get rid of the easier method here, uh, in terms of like the answers most advanced students would immediately be okay with getting rid of, which is you first get rid of the run-on. This is not the main part of the video, so we'll go through this quickly. Alright, so that's out and that's out because uh, with these, a lot of these grammar questions have three sentences in the paragraphs. You want to be aware of the relationships between those three sentences. So <coughs> I feel like I've been coughing for the past like four months, dude. 
So I have one sentence here. Okay. And then I have another sentence to here, probably. And I have another sentence here. So I have three sentences. So Okinaka doesn't make such decisions single-handedly, however. All historical designations must be approved by a group. That's two sentences. I have subject, verb, and then I have subject, verb, or well, verb phrase, really. All right. So that part's a sentence, that part's a sentence. If you guys are unsure on what is a sentence or not, that's a separate video. Um, I really should organize my videos into playlists, but that's not the main topic of the video here today. But so once you know that these are two sentences, two and three, then I can tell. I cannot connect two different sentences with just commas and however. The only things I can do commas and connect sentences with are the comma plus fanboys conjunctions, the coordinating conjunctions for and nor but or yet so. This one's even more as you get no punctuation. You cannot use however to connect just two different sentences, okay? They must be separate sentences punctuation-wise in order for me to use however. So between A and B. All right. So the question here is, it's boundaries, right? It's not really a matter of am I making a properly divided sentence or not. That was the case for C and D, getting rid of them, but... The advanced part, a lot of students ask questions for A and B. Those are both grammatically correct sentences. So then, how do I deal with this? And this is weird in that normally they don't deal with grammatic. No, they don't. They don't deal with things outside of grammatically correct on this SAT um, category. If it's grammatically correct, then its the answer is usually the case on the digital SAT. On the old SAT, there are more patterns in terms of which one of these actually is uh, good writing or which one of these makes sense. It's kind of going back to that. Where should I put the however? Okay, now, you guys waited a while for this. I know it's a quick and dirty video, so I don't want to talk faster. I've also gotten feedback that I talk too fast. So there are three sentences, okay? So I'm going to call them sentence one, sentence two, sentence three. And the specific pattern, okay? The specific pattern that I wanted to go over is this. When I have sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, the question is going to be on the transition. Let's say this is the... Okay, there's the end of sentence one, there's the end of sentence two, right? Where does this transition go? Does it go at the end of two or does it go at the beginning of three? That's the problem here. Do I put the however at the end of sentence two or do I put the however in the beginning of sentence three? And for that, here we go, the pattern. The pattern is it's after sentence two. Okay, that's a pattern, especially if it is a contrast. So if you want to just have 100% faith in this pattern, regardless of anything else, that's the pattern. However, why does it work? How does it work? Do you want confidence in why this works? This is why this works, okay? So I'm going to have, specifically it's this, S1, contrast, S2, and then S3. That's been the pattern on the SAT, yeah? So... And if you keep in mind that on the advanced questions, SAT is trying to trick you, college we're trying to trick you, this is what they're doing. The contrast is between sentence one and sentence two, which makes it weird for me because what, what did I say the answer was? Okay. That's the meaning, right? But the SAT answer format looks like this. Except there's a period here, so the contrast technically belongs here. Order doesn't really matter that much in English. So... The top, what I wrote over here, is the more natural way to write it. Because when you write a transition in an English sentence, the transition lets you know the relationship between the current sentence and the one before. Right? So I have, I ate a lot, period. However, I still wanted to eat more, period. That's the normal way to write. However, you could do, I ate a lot, period. I still wanted to eat However, that's also grammatically totally correct. It's just, why would you write like that? Because why would you put the transition at the end if it's related to the sentence from before? That's just unnatural and awkward, and most people shouldn't write like that. Yeah. But that's why SAT picked it. So the answer here is A. Now, I didn't even look at the text, right? Because it doesn't really matter the text. It's the pattern that matters. So what's the pattern? They make a claim. So what is it? He sits on the, he's on the review board, but he doesn't make the decisions by himself. Other people make it with him. 
So the answer here is A. And more thing on the pattern here, this is an example, sentence three, okay? So if sentence three is an example for sentence two, then it cannot be a contrast. Examples cannot be a contrast to the thing that they're the example of. That can't work. So again, how does the breakdown for this go? He's on the board, but he's not the only person making decisions. He works with other people, right? He's on the board, sentence one. But he's not the only guy making decisions, sentence two. So that's the bot, so that's where the contrast goes. So the contrast needs to go in sentence two. Sentence three, he works with other people. That goes with sentence two, so no comma transition there, no contrast there. Yeah, so that's the video for today. And if you break it down, this very specific pattern has been repeated over and over again. So memorize that, guys. Um, and go get your practice in, right? Um, leave me a comment on whatever question you guys want me to cover, and I'll get back to you guys. Uh, and we will also, announcement for future, be going over the new practice test the College War is adding. Uh, on February 3rd, practice test 7, 6, no, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we'll be doing that, okay? So till then, study every day with who? With XJ, that's the way. You already know. Bye-bye.